YouTube friends. I want to show you another kind of unusual doll from my collection. This is not really much of a play doll, but she is really neat and I really like her. I've had her for about 30 years now. She is a vintage Peggy Composition McCall's sewing mannequin and she is from the 40s. Now she does have, it looks like, some markings on her back, but you really can't read them. Um, she's made of composition and very, very breakable. Usually you will find these dolls with missing limbs or broken arms or legs, but she just has very straight legs, a straight body. She's not padded at all. She is the composition hard material. And this one is in great condition because she is not cracked. Most of these have a lot of crazing on their faces or on their arms. Let's see if I can get her in focus here. There we go. And she does have molded hair. So it's not... She does have one little crack on her back here. And again, just a straight body and very straight legs. The legs come down into painted shoes and then the feet have these kind of pegs on the bottom. Now the pegs originally fit into a little um, platform. I think this little wooden piece has been replaced on mine because it really looks kind of homemade. <laughs> but, I, you know, these dolls were made during the 40s. The war was going on. They might have had shortages, so you never know. But their faces um, are all a little bit different because these are hand painted. So they weren't, um, they weren't completely stamped evenly. Mine's got a little unibrow, <laughs> kind of a crooked mouth. She's really cute though. I like her, but then they kind of spray painted the hair on. Yeah, so she's got an interesting little face. Kind of reminds me of Lucy with the little curled up bangs. And they had different versions of these from the different sewing companies. They had, um... Oh, they had different ones from Singer, they had McCall's, all sorts of different um, sewing mannequins that were used for the children to make clothes to fit on them. And then they would model the clothes. So this outfit that mine has is really nicely detailed. Um, it's got the little flower at the waist. It has a hook and eye closure on the back. So whoever made this dress did really well that it's holding up from the 40s. But I love the... Um, the original striped cotton fabric, the way it's cut, it just is really well done. So maybe a grown-up did this one, I don't know. But if it was a little seamstress, uh, they did a really nice job. Now, because these are for sewing, they made them so that the arms do remove. So that's why sometimes you'll find these without their arms. They kind of pop right out at the shoulder. I'm not going to do it now because... They do like to fall out, <laughs> but the shoulders are made so the arms can pop out while you're getting them fitted for the clothes. So just a really interesting little doll here. I'll tell you a little bit more of the history from what I found online. I do have a book about these, but I think I have it in storage right now or something. So they um, they were made by Butterick, um, Driz Tom, McCall, Latexure Products, Simplicity, and Singer Sewing Machine Companies, and maybe some others. They were in a kit, and they were produced from 1938 until the 50s. Now, mine is from the 40s, but I'm not sure exactly what year in the 40s. Um, they're usually an undressed doll of 12 and a half to 15 inches tall. This one is about 12 to 13 inches. She's kind of a little bit bigger than a Barbie. Um, they were made of composition or sometimes a latex material with molded painted hair, painted facial features, and a closed mouth. Um, and then they had fabric with them, some um, patterns for sewing, instructions. They came with everything, a thread, thimble, needles, trimmings, a tape measure. So it was really kind of a neat how-to kit for a kid. And then you got the little doll to look at when you were done with it. So I think these are really <laughs> so neat. They were meant to encourage the budding young seamstress, tailor, or sewing entrepreneur during the World War II years, during which time money and supplies were difficult to come by. So that's some information from dollreference.com if you're interested in learning more about these. 
but they're, you know, you really rarely find them just like in your search for dolls. But if you do look up sewing mannequin on eBay, you'll see a bunch pop up and they really go for reasonable prices. They're usually around $50. If it's the entire kit still intact, never used, of course, it's going to be more, but the doll herself would go for about $50. And they're just a really kind of neat addition to your collection and something that's very historical being from the World War II era. So I hope you found this informational and if you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I like seeing new subscribers pop up on here. I like sharing my love of dolls and the doll collection I currently have. And it's a nice reference for me too to go back and learn about my own dolls. <laughs> have a good day.